right, the stopwatch has started. We are going to be on Istanbul time here in about 13 hours, leaving San Francisco en route to Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia to uh, go on some Ibex. So I'm super excited to be doing this and uh, excited to have you along. in Mongolia and we are literally on the side of the road. My ammo didn't make it. <laughs> Matt's ammo box is somewhere at the airport. <laughs> I think all I can do is laugh, honestly, right now. You can't do anything else but laugh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Mongolia 29 hours later and made it without one of my bags which has all my ammo in it my 30 rounds so trying to uh, figure out plan B at the moment we fly out tomorrow to the Altai Mountains so got to figure out a plan hopefully uh, I can get on a domestic flight today uh, if not I'm gonna be looking for some factory ammo which I'm not crazy about, but um, so we'll see what happens. All right, so we're back at the airport, and my bags made it. So I've got all my gear, my ammo. Ibex are seriously fucked right now. <laughs> but I'm actually super relieved that my stuff came, so. We got one more day, we're gonna head back to the hotel, and then tomorrow we push off to the Altai, so it's almost go time. Camp Gira, which is short for yurt 
or Mongolian for your heading up to the mountains this morning. Super excited. Always been a bucket list dream item to come to Mongolia. So let's see what we can kick up. Who I found on the trail. Hey! <laughs> the killer. 462 yards compensated. Uh, yeah, about that 466 compensated, so he's probably about 550 straight down the hill. One shot through the shoulders, made it about 40 yards, piled up. Now, uh, smoked Altai. Packing him back to the top. We can see the truck in the distance, that's a good thing. We uh, dropped off. At least a couple thousand picked him up. Now we're heading back to the vehicle. Hopefully Maddie connected on his, so we'll see how all that hunt went. And maybe I'll get a cracking one today. If not, we'll get back after it tomorrow. So incredible place. Look at this country.
yesterday, so we uh, came up the mountain, mountain probably roughly three to 4,000 feet, and uh, the plan is to try to get above them and, uh, you know, weather pending with the wind, see if we can get in for a stock. But we saw at least three nice Altai billies in this group, so hope is we can get in close uh, for a shot. So anyway, we'll see what happens. down and see it. Super excited. Three nice billies in there. Um, I mean, one had width, one had mass, one had length, and chose one with length. And uh, I don't think there was a bad decision in the group, but he's down and I got my Altai Ibex down. I'm super excited about that. And uh, no better place on earth to be in Mongolia. This place is just incredible. The topography, the landscape, the people, the food, you name it. It's been an awesome experience. So we're gonna grab this one and then uh, we're gonna go have some fun with some Gobi Ibex. So anyway, let's go take a look at them. The places these Ibex live. Mongolia, no place on earth like it. Unbelievable. Altai Ibex. Altai Mountains. find us a good Ibex this morning and uh, hopefully put a stock on it and uh, see if we can get done. Good Ibex. Ibex hunting is in the elite of extreme mountain hunts. Some will say that goat hunting starts where sheep hunting ends, and there's a lot of truth to that. They live in places that are tough to get to, almost inhabitable, and requires either horses or your own two legs to access. There's something about Mongolia. It's, it's a special place, you know, amongst the, the Asian countries, it, it's definitely different than um, a lot of the, the high extreme mountain hunts that you'll do in Tajikistan or Kyrgyzstan. Uh, but Mongolia just really, um, it just captures your heart when you're here and uh, you don't want to leave and you're looking forward to the next time to come back. <laughs> 